Greens can be a very tricky color. It can be difficult to make them look natural. So I'm challenging myself in this step-by-step -step landscape watercolor tutorial to paint just using different shades of green. Let's get started. These are the different shades of greens that I will be using and a full list of these greens can be found in the description below. So I'm going to use all of these greens in this landscape painting and it's straight from my imagination. I'm not even going to do any drawing. So I'm wetting the sky area and I've decided out of all of those greens to use the Glacier Green by Schmenke because it kind of looks like a grey blue and I love the granulation effect as well. So I'm mixed up a big puddle here and I'm going to paint the sky wet into wet, just tickling that beautiful colour onto the top part of the sky and I'm going to start tilting. You can see already the colours sort of divide up and you get these sort of two sort of separating colours. It kind of reminds me of Daniel Smith's Moon Glow, which I absolutely love. So I'm just tilting here and getting the paint to run down. And I love the fact that it just granulates straight away. You get those amazing textures. So I'm just continuing tilting, getting that paint moving and sort of making it a little bit paler as it goes towards the horizon to create a little bit of depth in my painting. Next, I'm using the Winsor & Newton's Terra Vert. That's a kind of a grey green. And I thought it'd be quite nice for some distant mountains. So I'm just mixing that up into the glacier green as well. So I've got a real mixture of greens here. And I'm just painting this wet on dry, but also pushing that colour wet in wet on the lower part of the sky area. And just diluting the bottom part here with a clean, damp brush. And next I'm going to use Daniel Smith's Green Appetite Genuine and mixing it in with the Terra Verde and the Glacier Green as well. So I've got three colours mixed here and I'm just painting this wet into wet with my size 10 brush. I like the way some of the water from the sky areas run into that distant mountain creating quite a nice effect. Happy accident. And I'm mixing up the green Appetite Genuine with the Viridian here and painting it damp into wet. I'm just painting a little bit more damp into wet on the right hand side as well. And what you get is darker colours with the damp and it doesn't run as much as wet into wet. What I'm doing now is just using my flat brush, load it with the leaf green. I'm sort of painting the sort of middle ground, pretty much wet on dry, pushing it into the wet wash above. So I'm using that hooker's green and the green gold here mixed together, painting wet on dry. Now going in with the tundra green with my flat one inch brush and really just sort of painting the foreground, adding a little bit of the leaf green and then mixing the tundra green with the green appetite genuine to create a really much stronger foreground using these lovely greens and blending that tundra green with that green appetite genuine creates a beautiful natural looking green. So I'm going in with the tundra, the hooker's green and the green appetite genuine. So I've got three greens here and I'm painting damp into damp. So the surface now in the background is now damp and not too wet. And the paint, I'm literally getting it straight from the tube here and then using my damp brush to sort of paint on the side of this flat brush to create these sort of distant trees. It's so much fun painting from your imagination. It takes all the pressure off. I'm just painting in some foreground grasses is here using the hooker's green with the tundra green and a little bit of the green appetite genuine here as well. Just going in now with my size 10 round brush mixing up the green appetite genuine with the glacier green and just sort of painting some more grasses. I'm just sprinkling some sea salt onto the foreground area and I am using a plastic card now to lift off the damp paint. You want to do this quite swiftly and if the paint's too wet it will run back in on itself so do this when the paint is damp and not too wet and it creates some lovely light long thin grasses is a really effective technique i'm turning my painting to the side and i'm using the plastic card again just to lift out some light areas on the tree line here to create sort of fence lines 
tree trunks and branches and it's quite nice because it breaks up these sort of dark colours as well and creates some interest. And I'm using the Tundra Green with my size 4 brush to paint in tree trunks and branches and using the size 4 with the Tundra Green just to use a dry brush technique here to create texture and I'm also using the Green Appetite Genuine with a little bit of the Tundra Green to start painting some more texture in the foliage of the trees using some of the Hooker's Green as well and to paint the tree trunk as well with this you get a really lovely dark green and it's really fun just to experiment and I'm just sort of painting some details here, pretty much wet on dry, using my size 4 brush and just using the darker greens. And just sort of carefully painting in these imaginary sort of tree trunks and branches and some grasses beneath as well. So again, mixing up the hooker's green with the green appetite genuine and using a, a dry brush effect to create some bushes here and textures along the tree line. painting a very dilute wash of green gold here in the middle ground just to sort of brighten this area up and I'm using some of the cobalt green as well and I thought this might look like a lake in the distance here so I'm just painting that in and using a little bit more of the green gold here and painting it's so almost glazing this thin wash here just to brighten up this area here and catching some of that green appetite genuine allowing it to run down into the green gold and just using a little bit more of the green appetite genuine and filling in a few more tree trunks and branches here Just mixing up some of the leaf green with the hooker's green here and using the belly of my brush to create a dry brush effect, adding a little bit of the hooker's green, painting damp into damp. I'm going to continue on painting tree trunks and branches here to add interest and details to the trees with my size 4 brush using the green Appetite Genuine and the hooker's green. And I'm just building up some darks and textures here using the belly of the brush with that hooker's green and green appetite genuine. You can see with watercolour the traditional way is working light to dark. And that's where I'm here now building up the darks and the details. I'm using the plastic card as well to lift off some of that damp paint to create some lighter marks as well. Again, to create the look of tree trunks and branches and lifting off some of the dark here on the edge to create some light as well. And I find it useful turning my watercolour block as well to help me do this. There's some spots in the sky, so I'm using the Green Appetite Genuine and the Hooker's Green to paint some birds, just painting very simple V shapes. And I'm painting grasses now using a rigger. You can use a liner brush or a small brush or even a twig. And just using some of the darker greens, the Green Appetite Genuine, Hooker's Green and Tundra Green to create these marks. And just some details now in the grasses using the tip of the rigger brush here to create texture, darks and details. So just adding a few more marks here, it's pretty much damp into damp 
and I've just covered my painting now with a kitchen towel using the leaf green mixed with some of the green gold and I'm spattering on to the damp nearly dry surface with my size 8 brush to create some wild flowers there in the foreground. Mixing up the cobalt green now and I'm spattering that as well this beautiful almost unrealistic color really into the foreground to create textures and details here. Mixing up the Green Appetite Genuine with the Hooker's Green and just finishing off here with one final spatter to create the texture in the foreground. And you can lift off any of the spatters that you don't quite like or are too big or in the wrong place here with a paper towel. Here is the finished painting and I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Just experimenting using just green, different green paints to paint this landscape scene from my imagination, which is very freeing up. If you like this tutorial and you'd like to support the content that I create here on YouTube, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? You will get access to weekly exclusive tutorials and line drawings. Details about the membership can be found in the description below. Just click the link and it will take you to my Patreon membership. If you have any questions, please put those in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.